Hello class, and welcome back to Mass Effect. So for this episode, I tinkered around a bit with the audio levels. Let me know if you think it sounds better or anything. But, uh, hmm, there's a side quest here that uh, we might get around to eventually. But I'm not planning to until the next episode. In fact, I actually didn't until the next episode, because I already filmed the next episode because I'm thinking ahead. Yeah. So anyway, we'll be heading off to the Artemis Tau Cluster, I believe. Uh, Yes, Artemis Tau Cluster, and finding Liara Tissoni, Tissoni, I don't, someone tell me how to pronounce that, anyway. We find the last member of our party. The adept member, as you can probably imagine, as um, Asari, or generally renowned biotics, and uh, we don't actually have an Asari party member yet. So, yeah, that, that's what we'll be doing. So, it doesn't actually tell you what star system she's in. So we're gonna have to go on a bit of exploration. Oh, maybe I can show you a bit on how asteroid belts work. So as far as I can tell in every single one, there is always an asteroid which contains something to further along a side quest like the uh, mineral fi finding ones. So just scan around, once you see little tags that says unknown above it, go back and try to find it. Uh, oh, wait, wait, right there. You find it, you can survey it, and you get a, a piece on little side quests. It's just a nice little thing. You really don't have to do it. I'm not even sure what the side quests get you, but well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just weird. I'm OCD like that, or actually CDO. That's alphabetical the way it should be. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's keep scanning the planets. This one you can actually land on, but looking at it, I do not think this is the one we're supposed to be on. So. Yeah, it does not look like it because there's a hazard. Well, we spend definitely spending some time out of the vehicle. So let's try Nosos. This is a little cutscene that plays whenever you're not going between clusters or systems or whatever they're called, because it doesn't actually need to go through a mass relay; it just needs to travel around a bit. So if my hunch is right, these both of these asteroids belts should have some kind of a metallic asteroid. So let's uh, survey around both of them. Pretty sure there's only one in each belt, so you don't need to worry about that. Oh, well, that was lucky. Carbonaceous. I need that. I need to use that more often. Okay. So yes, this this asteroid is carbonaceous. I right clicked. I smirt. I smirt. Okay. I smart. Yeah. Don't think there's anything here. I know for a fact there's nothing here because I scanned all the way around and there was nothing. Okay, our many no. I clearly remember Liara's dig site being on a uh, fiery world. Not Fasistos. I, I know for a fact it's hot. Um, not this one, but it's. I generally like to scan every planet in a system just to further along the side quests. Theorem. Yep, it's Theorem. Let's uh, let's scan this last planet before we go there. See, this one looked red, so I figured that was the fiery one, but nope! It's Therum! Okay, Nosa System Therum Planet. That's what you need to go to. Might be good to survey all the other sites, but she'll be going there eventually anyway. Okay! Now, as you can see, the grayed out person there, or the blacked out, or whatever it is, the person there is uh, Liara. So, grab the Dream Team. Uh, confirm squad selection and go. So it plays all the normal side quest cutscenes because it'll be landing in your car, but it's a definitely unique model of planet, and there's a little bit of Joker dialogue right at the beginning here. Commander, I'm picking up some strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. Alright, guess where we're going. Now, just one question, Joker. Why could we have not landed closer? Why? I, I just I just want to know that. But, well, I suppose Joker is ruler is ruled by the devs, so we'll just have to live with it, I guess. Ah, don't fall in the lava, don't fall in the lava, don't fall in the lava. Okay. I made the mistake of having the corner of my wheel touch a bit of lava once. Instant death. So don't ever, ever touch the lava. Yeah. So don't. This way. 
no enemies yet, it's probably a good idea to quick save in case there are some. Because you can't quick save when you're in fights, and fights in a vehicle tend to last a lot longer than on ground. Oh dear. Uh, uh oh. That's not good. Oh! Hey! It's a dropship! And armatures! Okay. So in case you can't see them, and I sure can't, armatures are the anti-vehicle, or... An armatures are the anti-vehicle geth, or essentially the tanks. Yes, the geth have tanks, and they're called armatures. For some reason, I have no idea what that word even means, someone explain to me please. But they have a little, different little icon to show that they are, in fact, tanks. You may have noticed it, it was like a little, like, squished diamond type icon thing. So, yeah, be wary of those guys, because they actually pack a lot of punch and can really tear through your shields if you're not careful. Now, those guys were the easy ones. Here, as you can see, there's quite a few more. And it looks like it's accompanied by a whole bunch of little yellow, little red triangles, which means that place. This route's a no go. They have height and cover. Well, I could go that way if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. There's actually a side route that makes it much, much easier. Right over here. There's a turret. Turrets are like stationary armatures that shoot rockets. Very easy. It takes two cannon shots if you're. <coughs> takes two cannon shots if you're willing to wait that long between machine gun cannon shots, but really it's like cannon, a whole bunch of machine guns, and then another cannon. But, uh, yeah. So we'll be cutting in through the side here, and behind the door. So, really any kind of Geth infantry, or any infantry, period, is of no match to your ultimate car powers. See that Geth trooper over there? One well-placed cannon shot would have sent him flying and his three buddies if they existed. Because that is a forever alone Geth warrior. Sad to be him, I guess. Well, let's, uh... Yeah, that'll do. Okay. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of people behind that door there. And, uh, looks like we can't save until we get rid of the enemies. So we're gonna have to get out here. Now is not the time! And they all have combat dialogues, so I can't show you any of, the, any of the interesting, like, it's really, really hot here dialogues that all the people have, except Rex, because Rex is awesome. So anyway, I'm gonna do a lift here, uh, throw up a bit, see if that helps, and then shoot him, like, twice. I'm so used to reloading. Ugh. Playing too many first-person shooters, and he'll be pressing the R button every time you stop shooting. It's ridiculous sometimes. Uh, let's check out what- whoa. Okay, apparently killing all those armatures gives us some loot. Who knew? Okay, nothing extra special here. Um... No better assault rifles, which is unfortunate. Let's give her a heat sink, that's a little better. Actually, improved sighting, yeah. That way she'll be able to hit things from farther away. That's pretty important. Uh, nothing better there. Well, she could... Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna stick with a high-caliber barrel. Okay. Sprint over this way, because I want to get fatigued. Open the doors, and run back to the car before the turret starts... before the turret starts saying to shoot at us. Okay. This way, this way. Do a little spam sprinting. That's not gonna help at all. Get the vehicle. Still can't quick save. Knock down the turrets. Knock down the turrets. Oh, we leveled. That's nice. Okay. You silly idiot. Put your points in charm. Ugh. Past me. There's dialogues when you go back to the Citadel and you're gonna hate yourself for not putting your points in charm. Past me, put it in charm. Ugh. Oh well. I'll just have to live with it. I already filmed the next episode anyway. Okay, that's one more turret down. There's that one guy. 
hiding in that one little facility that can't even see us, and preventing us from quick saving. Ladies and gentlemen, Mass Effect at its finest. Okay, doesn't look like there's actually anything here. Oh, let's have put my stasis ability up at 6, then move Marksman to 7, and Shield Boost to 8. Um. Yeah, nothing here. Okay. Now is not the time. Move back this way. So that's all the abilities we'll be able to equip, and that's I'm pretty sure that's actually all the abilities that we have. So yeah, we'll be sticking with the eight slots. Curve around a bit. Get out of the vehicle. Sprint up here a bit because we're in combat. And we can put up a barrier. Always remember to buff. Yes. Lift him up. Shoot him a few times to knock the barrier. Shoot him again. As you can see, I use the marksman ability. It makes you shoot a little faster, which is always, him, always Amanda. nice. Ah, oh, can I quick save? I can quick save. Ugh. I feel so much better now. Okay. It's, uh, oh dear. I have to channel the frogger. Frogger powers activate! Okay, I'm done. Uh, it doesn't look like anything special in that one. So... I think my eyeballs are dried out. This is hilarious. My people have searched many generations for a world to call home. If we landed here, we'd just keep searching. Yep. Like an oven here. Even the Geth wouldn't want to live in this heat. They're robots. What's the worst that could happen? They melt? I mean, we're not melting. And I'm pretty sure they won't either. Oh well. So apparently it's really hot. So that's good to know. Oh hey, there's an armature. Oh, I got a pre-hit on it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I'm not quite sure why past me just opened those menus. Probably just to check the item that he got in his inventory. A little inventory notification on the uh, on the right when you kill an enemy like so. So you got the little inventory notification that means you just got something. As you can see, we now have phasic rounds three. Shock absorbers. Hmm. Protection against throw and lift and stuff. Ooh, armor plating. Like. Hardened weave? Not really. But armor plating is good. It's just all around damage protection, and that is what you want from armor. Phasic grounds. Eh, not quite worth it yet, I think, but I'll equip them anyway. Or did I equip them? I can't even tell. Past me, did I equip them or not? I can't. Anyway, I've off in this way. Can we quick save? I don't think we can quick save. Definitely can't quick save with firing on us. Yes! Direct hit. There we go. One more down. Or as a songwriter would say from like the 80s, another one bites the dust. At least I think that's how it goes. Okay. That one's dead. Or him. And another one down. Okay. I, I'm, I'm gonna stop now before uh, before I embarrass myself anymore. Okay, up here is a few rocket troopers which can wreak havoc if you don't kill them early. And a super armature, which is also known as a Colossus. He sees the big white thing over there. Here's a trick I figured out a while ago with Colossi. Dink. Poke them a bit. They fall over. You might lose some shields, but don't worry too much about it. I actually have a screenshot on my Steam page. Oh dear. Run away. Run away. Run, run, run. Run, you little idiot. Run. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, Colossi are really, really overpowered. Um, so generally, you want to be able to disable them before you shoot them. Like, for example, if you run up to them and use your jump jets properly, you should be able to just sit on top of them and they won't be able to do anything. And that is the funniest thing ever. I have one on my Steam page, actually, under the same username. So, yeah, if, if you want to see that, that's funny, but you don't really need to. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's the R button for repair. 
you needed you need Omni Gel for it, which is why I disassembled some of the items in the inventory screen just there. And it does have a recharge time, so you need to be careful of that. Now, because I have Tally on my teammate, I need full upgraded either electronics or decryption. I'm pretty sure it was electronics, but I'm not sure. Um, I reach um, basically enough. Once I have enough Omni Gel to start repairing, I have enough to finish all the repairs I need to. If you don't have a tech person on your crew, repairing is going to take a long time, and you're going to hate yourself because you're going to spend a lot of time sitting down doing nothing, and you're going to need to just spend a lot of Omni Gel too. So this is why you always want a tech person. Melee attack! Yeah! Why can't I quick save? There we go. Now I can quick save. See, because one of my party members notified the all clear. It doesn't happen every time, but if you can't quick save and someone says all clear, that means you can. All of a sudden. <coughs> Sorry. Anyway, off in this direction. That's not the complex. Let's make a left. Popped on another quick save. Up this way. This is just another tunnel. Why did he put us down so far away? What was the reasoning behind that? We could have parked like right there in that big open stretch. Why couldn't we do that earlier? There was like literally no geth there the entire time. What was the reasoning? Explain, Joker. Explain. Okay, down this way, uh, cannon shot missed everyone, just the cover there, I think I caught one there, melee attack, Car's melee attack is so powerful against the dreams, it's ridiculous, uh, oh, 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 save it, 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 Save it? Do I have it saved? Do I have it saved? 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 Save it? Nope. Wait. Past me emerges triumphant. Okay. So you may have noticed our mini-map to the side there, or the radar or whatever, was jammed when we were in the car. That's because of the range, mostly, of the car's radar. Or whatever they're calling it now. Motion sensor? I got nothing. Anyway. If you get close enough to an enemy who has, like, a jamming ability, I don't even know who does that, but some do. I just got hit very quick by a rocket. Anyway, you won't be able to see where any of them are, so it makes it a little harder to, to do combat properly. You have to be really careful of rocket troopers. If you get hit directly by a rocket, and you don't have enough shields or armor, you are going to die. If you get hit in the head by a sniper, just out of nowhere, you are going to die. It happens a lot, especially right up here. There's a whole bunch of rocket troopers and a whole bunch of snipers, and this is overall just my least favorite part of the entire game. Just right here. See? Direct hit by a rocket, I was behind cover, and I still died instantly. I just hate that part. The snipers can do that too. And they're an instant hit, you can't even see those coming. And that's just ridiculous. So anyway, I might suggest coming here later, but Novaria and Pharos are just not what you're looking for, I'd say. So, yeah, they're, they're just more of this. I don't know what I just did there. Um, I really don't. Apparently, the shoddy editing has come to an apex. So anyway, an effective strategy in this section is actually just to run in there, hide behind cover when appropriate, and see if you can get reach of that sniper because it's well, it works, that's good. Oh, dodge the rocket. Get out of the way of the sniper. Get behind cover, aim at the sniper, and kill him. Okay, really sorry about the editing. I have no idea what just happened. But uh, but essentially, it's uh, what I was trying to convey was I probably died a few more times or something, and I just wanted to edit that part out. I don't even know what I was doing. I probably thought it ended up my death or something, but I don't I don't even know. Okay, so, basically the strategy in this part is don't stand behind that first cover kind of sniping them down with pistols, or even with a sniper, you are going to get rocketed to the face, and you have no idea what happened, and you will die, and you will be angry. Charge in there, stay behind cover when you're fighting, but always be moving. Be 
because there will be rockets, there will be snipers, and you will die a lot. And, oh dear, we're at this part again. Oh, no, I hate this part. Uh. So this part, worst part in the entire game as far as I'm concerned, even worse than the final boss himself, and he's supposed to be a challenge. You have to watch this cutscene every time you die. And it's so long. I mean, it seems like it's really short, but it's so long. Every single time you die. And you die a lot in this part. And I mean a lot. Because you have to fight an armature on foot. Yeah. Okay. So goal number one here. Uh, figure out what you're doing. Hope your friends get behind cover because you are going to need them. Uh, use marksmen, try to eliminate the stalkers and ghosts as quickly as possible, even though they're jumping around, they should have low health, and they should be easy enough to kill. Try and stay away from the, uh, I'm, I'm gonna invest a little in spectrum because I'm gonna need unity later. Driving my allies. Um, anyway, just try and stay away from the armature's line of sight, and knock out all his buddies. Okay, so looks like my friends are alive for the time being. Let's uh, see if there's any upgrades I can do. Something like Phasic, that'll be that'll be good, because he has a lot of shield. That's ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna run to the other cover. I'm gonna send them to the other cover. That way I can get a better view. Distract them a bit. Ashley's dead already. Using all my powers and nothing is happening. Singularity, maybe? Nope, that did a little damage. So I'm shooting basic rounds. I should be damaging his health, mostly. But it's really not enough to bypass. Both of my friends are dead. And it's just me and the armature. Okay, this is not gonna happen. Okay, I've knocked down a shield. So let's switch mods to... Chemical, I guess is the best I have. Wait for the overheat to go down. Do not get hit by those rocket missile things, because you will die if they hit you. Do a lot of damage, keep your shield down with a grenade. If he shoots those, get behind cover again. He can still hit you from behind cover, so it might be a good idea to move a little bit to the left. And he is dead. That took forever, both of my squad mates died, and that was horrible. Okay, they're back up, which means we have uh, successfully defeated the enemies of this area. We can quick save again, heal up with a first aid pack. What's over here? Absolutely nothing. Past me walked right past where we're supposed to go, because past me is stupid sometimes. Well, it, it's all in the future knowledge, you know, I guess. I guess, I guess, I don't even know. Okay, over this way, and up here, and we're finally ready to enter the ruins, or the facility, or whatever they're calling them these days. Quick save, go through the door, and we are into the underground section. Now this ought to be fun. Right down this way, for about a mile or two, you know, not too long. And might take a couple years, but I don't think it'll be here that long. Oh, boy, enemies. Nope. Bye. Sometimes my audits are just so hilariously fun. Especially when you're an adept and your biotics are ridiculously overpowered. You can like throw them like Oh. What? I I'm sorry, what? I, I didn't even know there was a sniper there, and he still managed to one shot me. How nice. This is why I hate Liara's dig site. I mean, it's necessary if you want to get the proper dialogue options, but still, this is ridiculous. It's snipers and rockets, two insta-kill enemies, all in this one area. There's shock troopers which use mini rockets, which are almost worse. And you're at low level if you want to get another party member. Really, really sucks. And 
it's almost required to get to uh, to get Liara. Well, it's not really required, but it's a really good idea to get Liara before heading to Novaria. And I guess you could go to Pharos without it, but Pharos is one of the hardest planets, I'd say, right next to the final one. So, yeah, this is just. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, this is just one of my least favorite areas of the game. I mean, even though you do get another party member, it also has the single worst boss fight I've ever encountered, even worse than the one on Pharos, and you'll see what I mean. Because the one on Pharos at least has quick save points. This one, this one has a cutscene. I'm not kidding, it has a cutscene and a wait time on an elevator before you get to retry it. And the one on Pharos has reached his quick save points. Yeah. Oh, assault drones. Those guys are fun. My bollocks can barely affect them. Get a barrier up or something. Get a march. That should do it. Uh, I'm moving marksmen over closer. It's so hard to shoot with that with it so far away. Actually, I'm gonna put uh, warp at six, singularity at two because it's way more fun. Marksman at five because I'll be using it a lot. To last. Looks like a lava flow board in here. Wow. Oh. Okay, so we have the four, my four favorites, then marksman, then warp, which is not my personal favorite really, then stasis and um, shield boost, which I will almost never be using. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's a much better array or arrangement. So it looks like we won't be going back up, because there is no jump button. <laughs> yeah, tricky, tricky devs. Ooh, Liara. <laughs> Good job. Expert. Prothean expert. Can you hear me out there? I'm trapped, I need help. Are you okay? What happened to you? Listen, this thing I'm in is a Prothean security device. I just earlier. Move, so I need you to get me out of it, all right? Why There's some kind of repulsion field in the way. Either. It's a Prothean barrier curtain. I knew it would keep me safe from the Geth. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please. Prothean actions on how we can help. There is a control in here that should deactivate this thing. You'll have to find some way past the barrier curtain. That's the tricky part. The defenses cannot be shut off from the outside. I don't know how you'll get in here. Be careful. There is a Krogan with the Geth. That's they have the been trying fight. different ways to get past the barrier. Final <sighs> action. Oh. Oh my. Okay. So there's enemies down there. So yes, that was the Prothean Expert, adept member of our party. You can definitely see uh, she is the working expert on Protheans that we, are, that we were hoping to find. So yeah, that, that'll be uh, very, very useful in the future. Yes. Let's just finish off these Geth, and let's see if you can guess how we're getting around, how, how we're getting around the shield. We're gonna blast around it with a mining laser. How does that sound? Oh. So this is like the code similar to the AI one we did earlier. Um, on the Citadel episodes. I don't believe you didn't watch those. Those are ridiculously long and really boring. Okay, so da 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 we just blast under it. It makes an area of the ground explode, granting us access to the lower parts of the ruin, where we can catch an elevator up and deactivate the uh, globe thing that Miss Prothe Prothean Expert opened. So we get up, and there. Okay. Oh, how did you get in here? I didn't think there was any way past the barrier. We blasted through with the mining laser. 
Of course. Yes, that makes sense. Please, get me out of here before more Geth arrive. That button over there should shut down this containment field. Hold on, Commander. Her mother's working with Saren. Can we trust her? I am not my mother. I don't even... I don't know why Benezia joined Saren. I don't want anything to do with that Turian bastard. If she was with Saren, the Geth wouldn't be trying to kill her. Flawless logic. That doesn't look like a button. That looks like a control panel. Huh. Any idea how we get out of this place? There is an elevator back in the center of the tower. At least I, I think it's an elevator. It should take us out of here. Come on! Oh, you're yeah, the one who got stuck on the globe. I, I still cannot believe all this. Why would the Geth come after me? Do you think Benezia's involved? Saren's looking for the conduit. Think fast, Miss Prothean expert. The conduit, but I don't know. So that the elevator going up? What the hell was that? Apparently it wasn't. These ruins are not stable. That mining laser must have triggered a seismic event. Oh goody. We have to hurry. The whole place is caving in. Joker, get the Normandy airboard and lock in on my signal. On the double, mister. Aye, aye, Commander. Secure and away. ETA eight minutes. He needs to move faster. So we have to sit through this elevator and all that dialogue every time we retry this boss fight. And this is one of the worst boss fights in the game, and it requires some of the most unconventional tactics I've ever seen. Especially in a game like this. And you have to sit through this dialogue and cutscene every single time. I just hate this area. It's just so boring, so overly ridiculous. In case you didn't notice, this place is falling apart. Exhilarating, isn't it? Thanks for giving me those energy fields for us. And the doctor. Whatever it is you want, you are not getting it from me. She'll stay with us, thanks. Not an option. Saren wants her, and he always gets what he wants. Kill him. Spare the Asari if you can. None doesn't matter. So this is the unconventional tactics I was talking about. Run straight forward, and get behind this box. Oh, I get unity now. Okay, what am I replacing? Shield boost. There we go. Yeah, we're never gonna use that. Plus, we shouldn't be needing unity in the middle of a firefight much anyway. So, the Battlemaster gets uh, biotic attacks, and his Geth are swarming. So, if you had been trying to go in the middle, they would be able to get around you, which would suck. So, since, since we ran into this portion of the battlefield, we are able to hide behind a rock. Or, sorry, we are able to hide behind a box. Effectively, and cut ourselves off from the rest of the battlefield. So be careful with the batter master. Be, be very careful with the battle master. Uh, once he gets to low health, he comes charging at you. And when he does that, stay very, very far away. His melee attacks are literally insta kills. I'm not kidding. I've I've died so many times to that guy. It's a one hit kill. Just. Don't get in melee range of that guy. It's just ridiculous. <sighs> okay. So I managed to pull that one off pretty well using unconventional tactics. Take care of the shock trooper. Too hard. And there we go. Okay, where was Liara during this whole thing? She was just sitting in the middle? Why did they just grab her or something? Deactivated. Epic run scene that we don't get any participation in because sense make. This would have been way more cool if it was like a runaway battle thing. Kind of like that uh, Chorus Den did. We had to run through, run through Chorus Den's bump, uh, bouncers before you can go rescue Tally. 
that, that would have been a lot more fun than this uninteractive cutscene. Oh well, it's their game, their choices. Normandy's just hovering there. No jets are showing, no anything, it's just hovering. I don't even know what it's doing. Oh well. Okay, we made it out. And we get to escape now. I'm wondering what the next 20 minutes of the video are. Guess what? Talking. Too close, not Commander. Kidding. Ten more seconds we would have been swimming in molten sulfur. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes. They tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull. Just for future reference. We almost died out there and your pilot is making jokes? Joker pulled our asses out of there. I think he's earned the right to a few bad jokes. Mm -hmm. I see. It must be a human thing. I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. But I am grateful to you. You saved my life back there. And not just from the volcano. Those geth would have killed me or dragged me off to Saren. What did Saren want with you? Do you know something about the conduit? Only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction. That is my real area of expertise. I have spent the past 50 years trying to figure out what happened to them. 50 years? How old are you exactly? I hate to admit it, but I am only 106. Damn! I hope I look that good when I'm your age. A century <laughs> may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours. But among the Asari, I am barely considered more than a child. Oh, the Asari That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves. Because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. I've got my own theory on why the Protheans disappeared. With all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there. The problem is finding evidence to support them. The Protheans left remarkably little behind. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved. It is like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. But here is the incredible part. According to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish. This cycle began long before them. If the Protheans weren't the first, then who was? I don't know. There is barely any evidence on the Protheans, even less on those who came before them. I cannot prove my theory, but I know I am right. The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction. Each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down. Only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy. Yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before. Their greatest achievements, the mass relays and the citadel, are based on the technology of those who came before them. And then, like all the other forgotten civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared. I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. They were wiped out by a race of sentient machines. The Reapers. The... the Reapers? But I have never heard of... How do you know this? What evidence do you have? There was a damaged Prothean beacon on Eden Prime. It burned a vision into my brain. I'm still trying to sort out what it all means. Seriously, how did he comprehend Visions. that? Yes, that makes sense. The beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user. Finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the Geth attacked Eden Prime. The chance to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. But the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean physiology. Whatever information you received would have been confused, unclear. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it at all. I a sure lesser wasn't. mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process. You must be remarkably strong-willed, Commander. Okay, this isn't helping us find Saren or the Conduit. Of course, you're right. I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me. Unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the Conduit or Saren. I don't know why Saren wanted you out of the picture, but I think we'll be a lot better off if we bring you along. Thank you, Commander. Saren might come after me again. I cannot think of anywhere safer than here on your ship. And my knowledge of the Protheans might be useful later on. And her biotics will come in handy when the fighting starts. See Good to have you on the team, Liara. Thank you, Commander. I am very grateful. Oh, I am afraid I am feeling a bit lightheaded. When was the last time you ate? Or slept? 
Dr. Chakwa should take a look at you. It is probably just mental exhaustion, coupled with the shock of discovering the Protheans' true fate. I need some time to process all this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional. It will give me the chance to think things over. Are we finished here, Commander? We can talk again after you've seen the doctor. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. We've received your report, Commander. I understand Dr. Tassoni is on the Normandy. I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Don't tell me how to do my job. You are free to act as you see fit, Commander. Our role is to offer guidance and advice. It's up to you if you're smart enough to listen. Sorry, Counselor. At least the mission was a success. Apart from the utter destruction of a major Prothean ruin. Was that really necessary, Shepard? The Geth were crawling all over those ruins. We were lucky to make it out alive. Of course, Commander. The mission must always take priority. Good luck, Commander. Remember, we are all counting on you. Okay, so I will not be talking much for the next 10, 14 minutes. I might as well just get up and go. But, you know, I, I think it might be necessary. You know, in case there's anything important I miss later at the end. But basically what this is, is I'm just taking this opportunity to talk to the crew. In my first playthrough, I completely missed this. And I missed out on half the game. I'm, I'm not kidding, I missed out on like half of it. So it's, it's a really good idea to just take this time to just walk around and see what they all have to say. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and skip the rest of the video if you're not interested in that. So that's all you need to watch, really. Anything for a walk through. Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Is this an official evaluation, Commander? Or off the record? Elenko, when it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. That's a generous attitude. Okay. I think there's something wrong with all this. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The Council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Vought. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in sync show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. But that's my own baggage, Commander. No bearing on this. It's a big galaxy, Lieutenant. Who knows what will come in handy? If you say so, sir. Besides, I've got my past squared away. See, you might miss on some of those you might miss out on some of those interesting stories. Just learning about all the races, learning about different people. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? It's really go. interesting Goodbye, just to Commander. hear the backstories of all these characters, at least for me. So, yeah, you can take your time if you want. You can just watch me. I'll do it for you. <laughs> Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. 
I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. You must enjoy something about it. I love my work. Seeking out history's lost secrets has a special appeal for me. Tell you were story. actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess! How could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. So in case you haven't figured it out already, there actually is some romance options. I haven't actually gone into them yet because on my first playthrough I completely missed all the talking and on my second playthrough I was doing everything I wasn't doing on my first so I was being basically a jerk to everybody, which probably wasn't a good idea, because I completely missed on all of the romance options. So, I don't know, this will be fresh for me too, but... I don't know, I, I might not even go into it, but... Who knows? I guess we'll just have to see. Looking for supplies? Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Generally, don't sell anything until you're back on the ship. Because that way... In case you have something that might help you on the field, like later, you know that you that you that you have options on the field. It's it's you can just sell everything when you're back here. There's no reason to keep it, I guess. There's a faster way to sell these. Just hit the accept button. It's much faster. I want to keep those phasic grounds actually. Those might be useful. Okay, there's three more crew members up here, and then tallies down the engine. We've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well, and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. So long, Rex. Shepard. He has these really interesting war stories if you want Commander, to listen to those. Commander, you have a minute to talk. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. 
I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies. At least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. I don't see that as inevitable. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. These seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Turian, I'll ask which cheek. I don't think kissing Turians will be necessary. You never know, Commander. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, sir. You never do. <laughs> okay. Commander, how are you? Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm. That's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. What? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. That's tough, but you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a CSEC man to the bone. Do things right, or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not gonna play by our rules. C-Sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. You're a quick learner, Garrus. We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. Alright, there's only one left. Ugh, this is getting really, really dull. But it's always worth it. It's always nice to hear about all those people. Hello, Shepard. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me. Especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? That's contradictory. You'll get used to it. But it's more than just the silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sounds like the pilgrimage isn't just about finding resources for the fleet. Maybe it's about teaching you to appreciate your people and culture. You're probably right. We Quarians spend our whole lives traveling. But really, we never leave home. The pilgrimage has given me a whole new perspective on our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. 
I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. I should go. See you later. Alright, that's all for this episode. I'll see you in the next one where we finish up a few of those side quests we've been meaning to do. Uh, that's all for this episode. Class is missed.